take off. In a nice way, of course. <laughs> Bannerman, you have the go-ahead. All right, Groucho. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Marion Myron and Mr. Edward Rodemacher are all set to play You Bet Your Life. So, folks, yeah. yes, would you in come in, please? What position are they in? Hmm? What do you mean they're all set to play You Bet Your Life? <laughs> are they crouched down like a hundred... <laughs> They're all set to play You Bet Your Life, oh, but it's a figure of speech. Oh, I see. Would you come in, please? How is her figure? Is it any good? <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Now then, uh, let's see. Mary and Myron, huh? You're the girl, huh? Oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you should certainly know, I mean. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Mary? Mm, well, you've heard the expression that life begins at 40. Yeah. I'm living. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You're not 40. Well, I'm having a wonderful time. You're twice 20? Um, a little over. You have children? I have two very charming daughters and a granddaughter. Well, they should be charming if they resent a granddaughter. Oh, yes. I'm very proud of that. Did you get married on your bar mitzvah? Huh? <laughs> And if more grandmothers look like you, I'm sure an awful lot of grandfathers would stop looking at television. <laughs> Mr. Rademacher, Rademacher, huh? Rademacher. Rademacher. Where are you from, uh, Eddie? I was uh, born and raised in Crete, Nebraska. A small uh, Where? Sea. Crete. How do you spell it? C-R-E-T-E. Mm. Same as the island of Crete. Mm. Well, in other words, you're a Cretan, huh? Right. <laughs> well, for a moment. Well, you know what a Cretan is, huh? And one from the island of Crete, I have no. Uh, well, it's not entirely. A Cretan is also a low-grade moron. Huh? <laughs> well, no, that's, that's true. A... I don't mean that you are. I mean, but there, are, there is such a word as a Cretan, you know. Ed, uh, what do you do for a living? Anything crooked that I could buy into? Uh, well, uh, I'm a manager of the local branch of the Imperial Hardware Company in Calipatria, California. Well, it's nice to know that. If I'm ever driving through Calipatria and. I run out of screwdrivers, I'll certainly look you up. Well, you do that, Groucho. As a matter of record, there are more screwdrivers in California than any state in the Union. <laughs> no other state can make that statement. Now, where is Calipatria? Is that in California? You mean you haven't heard of Calipatria? I, I've, I've hardly heard of California. <laughs> well, Calipatria is the most famous city in the Imperial Valley in California. Is that so? What is there about Calipatria that uh, you're so proud of? Well, we're located 184 feet below sea level. We're yep. known as the mo uh, most low-down city in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> in other words, when a person hits Calipatria, he's sunk about as low as he can get. Is that <laughs> when people ask me that question, I jokingly refer to myself as the low-down mayor of the lowest-down city in the Western Hemisphere. That's your little joke, eh? That's my little joke. Well, you keep it telling, I'm telling it, and you'll be 190 feet below sea level. <laughs> That's six feet below Calipatria. <laughs> uh, what have you been uh, doing since you're mayor? Anything that you could discuss publicly, like uh, hanging the city treasurer? Well, uh, last fall, I wired uh, Governor Knight of California protesting the... What do you mean, you wired? You wired him for sound? <laughs> no, I sent him a telegram. Oh protesting the levying of taxes in our maritime city. I felt that being we were 184 feet below sea level that we should be subject to maritime law. Or, in any event, that I requested that he build a flagpole in our city that would be 184 feet high. And thus, we'd be able to make contact with the rest of the state of California. <laughs> well, what did, did, the, did the good governor answer you? Yes, he was very gracious. He said that... Uh, uh, he would uh, be against the construction of a flagpole because it might be an impediment to navigation of California ships. <laughs> and that they might, uh... Well, if you see Governor Knight again, uh, you tell him his jokes like that, that'll get him back on the city council. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of this gabbing. Let's play You Bet Your Life. You chose uh, American history. We start you off with $100. Miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. Is that clear? All right, Soleil, you selected American history. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Are you ready? Yeah. And what do you want to start with? 70? Okay. In what town in New England did witchcraft become a major issue at the close of the 17th century? Talk it over. 
Salem, Massachusetts. Salem, Mass is right. Hmm? Off to a good start to have one hundred seventy dollars. Now, what are you going to try? Eighty. Fifty. Eighty. Eighty. What was the name of the famous overland route? that ran from Independence, Missouri, to Fort Vancouver on the Columbia River. Uh, Oregon Trail? You've been following Alan Ladd around, haven't you? That's right, Oregon <laughs> Trail. And you now have $250. A fellow who lives in a sewer, he said he knows a lot. <laughs> now what are you going to go for? Oh, let him go. 90, yeah. What ex-president later became Chief Justice of the United States? Taft. William Howard Taft is right. You now have $340. What are you going to try now? Shoot the works, Doctor. All right. For $100. Who was the British officer who met with Benedict Arnold and received the plans of West Point? He was captured and hanged as a spy. Andre. Major John Andre is right, huh? Oh, yes. oh Wendy, you wind up with $440. You know when I said before that you were a Cretan, I want to take it all back. <laughs> American, we're all Americans. You're one of the smartest uh, mayors we've ever had up here. And thanks, Granny. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing later, Granny? Huh? Well, uh, Groucho, Miss uh, B.B. Blake is waiting to talk to you, and her partner is a special guest, Mr. Jim Moran. So, folks, you should come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. B.B. Blake and Jim Moran, eh? Mr. Moran, where, where are you from? I'm from Woodstock, Virginia, Groucho, oh. right in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. Is that so? Currently live in New York City. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Moran, I think I recognize your name. Aren't you the fellow who sold an icebox to an Eskimo some time ago? Yes, I did, Groucho. Well, didn't you take quite a chance lugging this thing all the way up there on the hopes that you might be able to stick some Eskimo with this box? Well, no, uh, Groucho, you see, I'm in the publicity business, and uh, frequently, if you look behind uh, any stunt that uh, gets a lot of publicity, um, you will find that there's a client lurking somewhere. Oh. In the icebox? Not in the icebox, no. Uh, now, as a publicity man, do you think you could do anything for me? For example, could you make people think that uh, I'm Gregory Peck? Well, Groucho, the way I feel about the publicity business is you could, I could publicize a manhole cover. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, there's, there's, no, there's no connection there, really. Right? No offense in fact. No, no. But, uh, that's the one thing nobody has ever called me is a manhole cover. Huh? <laughs> now, B.B. Blake, huh? That's you, huh? Where are you from, B.B.? I'm a native of Los Angeles. I oh, really, huh? Are you, are you married? Baby? No. You're not married, no. huh? A young, attractive girl, not married? Do you have a job? Yes, I'm a professional songwriter. Do, do you belong to ASCAP? Yes, and the SPA, too. The SPA? That's a chase of dogs and cats? Huh? <laughs> what is the SPA? No, it's the Songwriters Protective Association. Well, judging some, uh, from some of the songs I've heard lately, a uh, <laughs> songwriter can use all the protection he can get. <laughs> well, what are the, some of the songs you've had published, baby? If oh, you're a professional, you must have had some songs published. Huh? Yeah, I have a Vic Timone record, Your Heart and Mine, and Baby, You Got a Lot to Learn with the Jones Boys. And if you Maybe could... you have a lot to learn with the Jones Boys? <laughs> well, how many Jones Boys are there? Well, I mean... we didn't learn enough. It was voted a hit on Peter Potter's, but it wasn't. <laughs> I have another one, If You Could Kiss Hello, The Way You Kiss Goodnight. And, um... Is that all there is to it? No, I've got a lot of What more is the to... next line to that, though? If you could kiss hello as you could kiss goodnight. Oh, Oops, you. oh, is that oh. Me? Huh? oh, 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 <laughs> and you have to be a professional to learn that? <laughs> very unusual pair, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is tree. Well, let's see, uh, you took as your category general information. 
And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We start you off with $100. And uh, if you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. What do you want to start with? The so small sums I'll are easy. A hundred? hundred is fine. A hundred? You're the conservative type, huh? <laughs> All right, for a hundred dollars. About 400 years ago, Sir Thomas More published a classic about a model nation where all social problems were solved. What did he call this place? Talk it over. Utopia? Utopia is right. So you now have $200. Now you have $200. Now what are you going to go for? Uh, as much as you can go for. $90. All right, a famous comet appears about every 20 to 76 years. What is the name of this well-known comet? It appears every 76 years. Halley's Comet? Halley's Comet is, <laughs> well, that's pretty close. It's Halley's Comet. And you now have $290. I presume now you're going for $80, is that right? All right? For $80, what was the name of the Greek god of the lower world? Greek god of the lower world. Well, a lot of Greeks, do they? Well... <laughs> Satan, I don't know, the lower world. No, it's Pluto. Pluto? Well, you uh, lost half your two ninety. You now have one hundred forty-five dollars. One hundred and forty-five dollars. What are you going to go for? Seventy. All right. What country was formerly ruled by the House of Stuart? London, England. Well, uh, it's England. England? <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> London, <laughs> but it's England. Huh? So you wind up with two hundred fifteen dollars. So uh, we have a, a local housewife for you now. She's Mrs. Velma Zimmerman. Her partner is a special guest, Mr. Donald Douglas, Jr. So folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Donald Douglas, eh? That's, eh? that's a very famous name. Are you in the business of manufacturing airplanes? Sure am, Groucho. Well. In other words, you work at Lockheed, is that right? No. No, Douglas. Oh, Douglas. Well, you've got the same name as the people you uh, work for, huh? Well, that's right. Well, that's, that's very convenient. What do you do? Are you a messenger? Uh, no, uh, Groucho, I'm a vice president. Oh. Well, you're still young. <laughs> Everybody has to start at the bottom, you know, especially if you live in Cretan. <laughs> Is that the name of the town? No, Dolly Rempel or something. Wait a minute. Have you ever heard of a town called, uh, well, I can't find it now. Calpatria? Calpatria? Yeah. It's somewhere in the uh, southern part of California. Yeah, that's true. It's a hole in the ground. It's a hole. 180 people live there and they have no flagpole. And Governor Knight goes there every few weeks and cracks a few bad jokes and then leaves. Now then, you say that you're Donald Douglas of the Douglas Aircraft. Well, how is it you're not the president of the company? Well, that's my father, Groucho. He's well, the... kick him out, huh? <laughs> well, I don't think I'm about to do that. He's president and chairman of the board. Well, uh, Don, you're a fine-looking young vice president. Thank you, Groucho. And I have a number of questions to ask you later. Okay. We won't be so friendly after that, but right now, I'd like to have a talk with your partner. Do you know where Calpatria is? No, I don't. You're very fortunate. Huh? <laughs> you're Mrs. Velma Zimmerman? That's right. Well, what sort of work does your husband do? Is he a vice president any place? No, he's a sawyer at a door and frame company. And he's a... He's a sawyer? Cut-off man. <laughs> Why didn't you get a regular size follow <laughs> He's a cut-off man. Did he, did he stand too close to his sawyer? <laughs> How tall? Is he a tiny man? No, he's average. He's average? Yeah. Well, how tall would he have been if he wasn't cut off? I mean. <laughs> tall as Mr. Douglas here? No, he comes from a short family. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean, short family? They had no money at all? That's right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Douglas, uh, let's find out some things about you. Don't ask me why, but it's just sort of traditional with our show. Are you married or are you flying solo? No, I'm married, Gotcha. You're married, huh? 
grounded already, huh? Yeah. <coughs> How old are you, uh, Don? I'm 38. 38. How'd you get to be vice president? Did it help any that by coincidence your name happened to be Douglas? Well, no, it really didn't, uh, Groucho. I've worked uh, there for some 17 years now. I started out as a $24 a week uh, draftsman in the engineering department. Oh, wait a minute, is there anybody that gets that little? Uh, Not anymore, Groucho. <laughs> they get that in a day, don't they? Yes, that's for sure. Oh. Uh, we don't pay anybody that much anymore. Uh, no. Is that why you quit? <laughs> I know what I do. They raise you to 25? Huh? Well, it took a long time in those days. This was back in the, the 39, 40. Now, how many planes would you say your outfit has manufactured in the last 25 years? Well, Groucho, it isn't 25, but 35 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no real way of my telling you here because of security, but uh, it is a fact. Nobody listens to this show. You could go right <laughs> Say anything you want. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm deaf ears. I know, but Alcatraz is a rough place. <laughs> no, a fellow swam it the other day with his hands were tied together. I saw that. You could do it if you had a little courage. <laughs> well, I might, Groucho, but uh, no kidding. Uh, one of the best examples of how many Douglas planes there are is a Douglas plane takes off and lands every six seconds, day and night. Same plane? <laughs> no. Didn't you make that uh, wonderful plane that was flown during the war so much? The, what was it, that kind of, the two-motor plane? Uh, uh, C-47, the old workhorse. No, uh, not the 47, there was another one. Uh, we made a two-engine bomber, uh, the Havoc. No, I wasn't in any of the bombers. No, I guess it was a C-47. That's the one they say that that's saved... The, yeah. Uh, that's the one where you got the waffle uh, treatment, uh, the corrugated bottom. Yeah. Well, no, that was the hostess, but that... <laughs> That's another story, and one that I don't care to go into right now. Well, could you, could you tell us briefly what's in store for us in the future of aviation? Well, uh, jet transports are around the corner uh, for you and I to ride on. Uh, and by 1959, we hope at Douglas to have our DC-8 in the airlines of the world. You'll be able to take off Paris in breakfast time, have lunch in New York, and dinner in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Not bad. You think that's fast, huh? That's not bad. You haven't been on the freeway lately, have you? <laughs> on, on our freeway, you have breakfast in Pasadena, lunch in Long Beach, and funeral services at Forest Lawn. <laughs> now, Velma, I'm a little ass sick, so let's get back to you. In addition to keeping house for this cutoff man, do you have any outside interests? Yes, I'm an amateur housewife. Singer. You're an amateur singer? Mm hmm Well, I'm just a country girl, so I sing country songs. What kind? Like boy lives, you mean? No, uh... What could you do for us now? Well, I could do Mama Don't Allow No Music in here. What does she allow? Huh? <laughs> well, go ahead and let's have a fling at that. Now, do you need any uh, compliment of any kind? Well, it might sound a little better. <laughs> well, I imagine it would, but could you give us an approximate idea of what you'd need? Oh, Mama, don't allow no trumpet playing in here. Now, wait a minute. Can you get that, Jack? Oh. You'll, have to, you'll, have to, you'll have to sing in his key. He only knows one key. Well, then we ought to get along. I only know one key, too. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually got married, those two, huh? And she left shorty. All right, tell us. Oh, Mama, don't allow no trumpet playing in here. Oh, Mama, don't allow no trumpet played in here. <laughs> now, Mama, don't allow no bagpipe playing in here. Mama, don't allow no bagpipe played in here. <laughs> Mama don't allow no hen cackling in here. <laughs> well, I can't lay an egg. Eh? <laughs> Velma, 
Kramer, that was great. You not only laid him in the aisles, but you also laid one on the stage. Yeah? <laughs> Well, it's been a very interesting experience talking to you two, and now it's time to play your bet your life. In the race with $1,000, the first couple still leads with $440. All right, uh, here, we, here we go. Now, let's see. General information, huh? Now, what do you want to start with? Okay. $70. $70, all right. Uh, with what national pastime do you associate the name Eli Culberson? A bridge. Bridge is correct. <laughs> $170. $170, what are you going to go for? $80, $50, $90? $80, Gus. What is the official date marking the beginning of summer? I think it's 21st of June, isn't it? You are absolutely right, Mr. Douglas. You now have $250. Now what? $90. This is something everyone learned in grammar school. In simple fractions, what do you call the number above the line? Numer numerator. Numerator is correct. And you now have $340. Now what? All the way. Is your last chance to be the other couples for $100. Everyone has heard of Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. You tell me who these biblical characters were. <laughs> Balthazar. <laughs> Balthazar. <laughs> Three wise men? Three wise men is right, huh? <laughs> And you wind up with $440, and that means that you people, along with Mrs. Myron and Mr. Rademacher with $440, are tied oh. for the chance at the $1,000 question. Eye on the Piedmont. It's news, weather, and sports. It's news that doesn't get home before you do. Eye on the Piedmont. It's in-depth coverage of health, consumer, and money matters. News that affects your family, your community. The Piedmont. Eye on the Piedmont. It's news that doesn't get home before you do. With Lee Kynard and Sandra Hughes, weeknights at 7. Eye on the Piedmont. News that doesn't get home before... Now, Groucho, here are the two winning couples tied for the chance at the $1,000 question. We've given them little slips of paper. They'll both write down an answer on the paper, and if uh, all of them get it right, they'll split the money among them. All set? All right. All right, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on the single answer between you. Think carefully. Please no help in the audience. Are you ready? The Bible tells of Samson's fight with the Philistines. The Philistines. For $1,000, what unusual weapon did he use? Write it down. All right, what is the answer you uh, four have decided upon? Correct? Yeah. Job on the ass. Job on the ass, so they split the money. <laughs> I'd like to give my money to the uh, Crescent Bay uh, Council of the Boy Scouts of America. I'm president this year, and we need money real bad. Well, thanks. I think that's a wonderful way to spend it. <laughs>